We're back for a new installment of EV Morning. Need I say it at this stage, you grab yourself a cup of coffee and settle in for the news. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Martin Lee, and if you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Well, for those of you that have been following our channel for a while and our news features, you'll notice someone who's been doing our car reviews on this channel. Joining me today is Blake to go through what's been happening in the world of EVs and how we power them. It's part of a little refresh we're doing on the channel to get some more guests and interviews on this channel. So let's have a look at what's been happening in the news. Blake, what do you have for us today? Oh, it's great to be on, Martin. Thanks very much. Uh, actually, being on screen with you. Well, on, settle down, settle down. Let's get on with this. Uh, look, first thing I want to talk about is Mini. Now, uh, I can remember back to uh, certain films and Mr. Kane in there, you know. But uh, what they are doing now is they're taking classic Minis and they're going to be converting them into electric. Have you seen this story, Martin? Yeah, and it's a great way of keeping classic cars on the road, taking out the old combustion motor and putting in an electric drivetrain. And the great thing about those classic minis, they're nice and lightweight, and you're probably not going to be using them for 500-mile road trips. So they haven't got to be like a lucid air, kind of these big highway range things. They can be 100 miles, 120 miles. Let's face it, you're probably going to be having fun with this at the weekend as a part-time car. The great thing about these conversions is they keep all of the combustion stuff. So if you're really into heritage and preservation, they will take out the oily bits, but they'll preserve them and store them so that if ever there is a point in time in the future when you want to put them back in, and I'm not sure you will, maybe they'll go on display somewhere in your garage or something, they are yours to keep and preserve. So it, that is a reversible process. They are mining old leafs for some of this, I gather, and you can get what is a great classic car from the 1960s bought bang up today. This is such a good way to keep classic cars on the road and relevant as we move into electric power. So what else have you got for us today? Yeah, I really want one of those, but let's wait and see the price tag first. <laughs> um, look, well, uh, yesterday for us, as we're recording this now, we had Skoda releasing the new Enyaq uh, Coupe IV VRS with all those other names that go after it. Uh, Martin, <laughs> we want to get your opinion on that in a second, but just to give people just a couple of quick highlights on that. So what do we have with the new Enyaq? Well, it's got a lower drag efficient with that slightly more coupe style. It sits a little bit lower thanks to sport your suspension, uh, but you're still getting 570 liters of space. And they're claiming that the headroom is actually better in this one than the original Enyaq. So that's great. Two batteries of 58 and 77 kilowatt hour usables. And we're looking at what uh, 132 kilowatts all the way up to 220 kilowatts for the motors. So the, uh, the slower ones won't be that impressive. But then as we talk about the RS variants, is it worthy of the badge on that? Martin, what's your take on that? Have you seen this? What do you think of the of the car? Yeah, I tweeted this out and put it on socials and say this is a great... I love stuff like this. I love uh, EV manufacturers have now got a little bit of leeway to start doing some interesting things with niche, more niche models that won't be huge sellers, let's face it. And um, when I did, people came back uh, and were like, wow, not to 62 miles an hour, not to 100K, 6.5 seconds, that's terrible. Look, it, it really isn't because if you need a car that's doing not to 60 in three or four seconds, where are you doing that? Where are you using that performance? Is it on public roads? Really? Are you really doing that performance on public roads? Now, as long as you've got loads of torque to overtake maybe on a motorway or a single lane road you're doing 40 or 50 and you want to get past a slow moving traffic as long as you've got that power that's all the car you need in everyday sensible driving what are you doing the traffic light grand prix so come on six and a half seconds is absolutely fine now of course this is on the meb platform so you'll be very familiar with how this car is put together by the volkswagen group but very interestingly, actually, personally, it, look, it's really subjective. I love the styling that their offshoots are coming with. So things like the Cupra Born, I think, mm. is a way better looking car than its equivalent, the ID3. And I really, really like the Skoda Enyaq much more than the ID4. But I know people love the ID3 and the ID4 because they're friendly and smiley and softer. And it's great that we've got a choice of all those vehicles. So, yeah, it's coming out uh, uh, with the coupe form which again, I know what people say, they're cutting a bit of the boots off, you're getting less car and you're paying a few thousand more. But hey, you only lose 15 litres of boot space somehow because it's actually quite a smaller car. So this is brilliant. And I love the fact that we're at a stage now in the maturation of electrification where we can start to have these interesting kind of spin-offs rather than just one single model. And that, I think, is a really good sign of what's to come.
Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. The fact that we've got so much choice now. Could we have had a conversation like this even two years ago, three years ago? I don't no. think so. so it's, it's great. But let's kick on earlier on because we were we were talking about the Mini earlier on and the fact that we can convert old cars. And here's we're touching on this again, Redwood Materials. So fans of Tesla, especially back in the old days, would have always heard of you know, J.B. Straubel. And he's moved on. He's working with Redwood um, now. And they are coming out with some exciting news. He was interviewed there recently, Martin. I don't know if you saw that. And he had some comments on profitability. Did you see that? Yeah, so Redwood uh, is the company that J.B. Straubel, the former CTO at Tesla, and back in you know founding days with Elon Musk, uh, he set up Redwood to get into battery recycling. Now, look, it must be said that these projects have been going on since electric vehicles have been around, you know, the major car makers and all sorts of companies have been looking at recycling. It's nothing new, but I think because of his enormous profile, and that's a great thing, it's got more people talking about battery recycling. And so that's the really interesting thing about lithium-ion batteries. And again, people who don't understand or have another agenda will say, well, these cars will be used for two or three years. And then because it's like their mobile phone, you know, they think, well, after three years, the thing has slowed down, I'm buying a new one entirely different battery technology uh, and battery management. We know that EVs will run for so, so many years. Uh, and, you know, the car will wear out before the battery. And even then, when it's done, there's second life. And when it's done, there's third life. Mm. And when that's done, at some point, they <laughs> will be recycled. Because the bits in them can be recycled. Some of them can be re recycled infinitely in terms of the raw materials. And that makes batteries incredibly profitable in the long run. It's hugely uh, promising. I think. But you know what? I think personally, and I know not my business, I think the problem's going to be getting hold of these batteries. I mean, like, you go and look at a scrapyard, for instance. I bet you're going to see a ton of old ICE vehicles. I bet you won't see too many electric vehicles with their battery taken out. So it's great technology, but I'm not sure it's going to scale anytime soon because the batteries are proving so much more durable than anybody thought. So they might be waiting until they get a big old supply of, of old EV batteries coming their way. Mm. Yeah, And what you said there, Martin, it's so right. But in one sense, I'm really annoyed at it because I've got a <laughs> Nissan Leaf. I, listen, I miss on my own Nissan Leaf. I bought it like four or five years ago now at this stage. Uh, it just hit the 100,000 kilometer mark. And the battery health is still well above 90%. It's, it's like had next to no servicing or replacements. Mm. And it's like, I can't justify getting rid of it because the thing is so resilient, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's enough of me ranting about it. It's, that's a good thing. It's a good thing, Blake. Don't be complaining about it, you know? <laughs> uh, I just don't get a chance to replace it with that Skoda Enya Coupe. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyway, I think it's time we move on to another story as well. Now, uh, we mentioned there J.B. Strabble having been with Tesla, but there's a little bit more Tesla news. Um, I was on social media and I noticed a couple of tweets from yourself, Martin, about uh, getting yourself set up in a Tesla app and charging there. What do we know about that? Well, as you'll see, I knew we were talking Tesla today, so I've busted out the old Tesla T-shirt. Now, this is quite an old one, so it's a bit faded. I'm sorry, I've not really dressed up for the channel today, but at least I'm on brand with Tesla. Yeah, this is completely uh, exciting news because there's been a trial happening in the Netherlands of the Tesla supercharging network being opened up to what they call third parties and third party or non-Tesla charging. And we were wondering, when's it going to be expanded? Will the trial ever be expanded? And when they and uh, announced their next stage of expansion. They did not one, but two countries. So select locations in Norway, select locations in France, and that's where they've stopped for now. If you're in those countries and you have the Tesla app, next time you open it, there'll be a, a new box at the top, uh, which says something like non-Tesla charging. I'm just going to check as I'm talking to you the exact wording because I was able to go into the, and obviously I'm, you know, I'm here in the south of England. Um, so it knows where you are, according, I think, to the address in your Tesla app. And yeah, so the actual wording is charge your non-Tesla. And so that now appears at the top because I changed my address to something random that I found in Paris. So even though my IP address, I'm here, uh, you know, connected to my, my local uh, internet provider, uh, but it now shows up if I say that I'm in France. And when it does, okay. I'm able to uh, sign up for that $12.99 subscription, which lowers the price per kilowatt hour of energy. Or I can just... Uh, find a charging station in France or Norway and the Netherlands and start a charge. So I, I haven't got my billing details in my Tesla app, uh, but I could update those. And then I think I could start a charge. So even though I'm not a resident of France, Norway or the Netherlands, and even though the terms and conditions say you must be a resident of these countries, or I think they just added Germany as well. 
I think I could. Now, I'm not going to try that and end up at a supercharger station with 0% in France <laughs> in a different <laughs> country, not being able to charge. But I think I certainly can. It's hugely exciting news. Of course, over here, the new Model S's and X's that are arriving in Europe are coming with a CCS2 plug. And that is different to what happens in North America, of course. So we are pretty much fully signed up over here. Whatever car you buy, it's got exactly the same plug on. None of that Tesla proprietary connector anymore. And so hallelujah they can make some money out of non-tesla owners which is a great thing for tesla and i don't know about you blake but i'll happily pay a bit extra because i make long journeys quite infrequently and when i do we have a three-year-old in tow and so when i stop i mm -hmm. want it to be easy i don't want to turn up to a charging station with one or two chargers one of them might be broken one of them might be busy a tesla supercharging station is going to be normally pretty big and normally I don't see any queues at those. Now, I know that during busy times, there can be queues and at some stations, it, they're very busy. But the ones Tesla have chosen, I gather, are the larger ones, the V3 superchargers. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, you know, I don't mind paying a little bit more. And you know what? Actually, some of the pricing is really competitive, actually less than the other networks that you would, would have been using anyway. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a win-win all around. And I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I think I, I'm with you on it. I don't mind paying an extra few cents. If it means that I know I can charge when I arrive there, I'm okay with that. That's fine. You know, what's an extra to like the price of what a half a pint of beer or something like that, just because to guarantee a charge, I'm okay with that. Uh, but anyway, Martin, sticking with Tesla there and and chargers, uh, Frito Lay and I think Pepsi are in with a big order for the um, the semis as well. But it looks like we've seen photos um, from Frito Lay's site in Modesta, I think, in California with. Uh, we don't know if it's working yet, but an installed um, mega charger, like their speeds they're talking about here is just astronomical, you know, a megawatt. And if it gets these uh, semis on the road quicker, faster, then I'm, I'm all for that. So hopefully you see a nice pilot program in the next uh, few weeks, a few months. And I'd love to see in the comments below what people think about this. Now, I've said recently mm -hmm. that I suspect that Elon Musk on the recent earnings call saying nothing new this year, no semi trucks, no cyber trucks. I just have a nagging doubt that that could be the greatest bluff of any poker player because they're putting the mega chargers in to clients, to PepsiCo, Frito-Lay. They're putting the mega chargers in for the semi-truck. We saw a picture of a bunch of them lined up in the shareholder letter. So why would they then say at the beginning of the year, nothing for 12 months? I'm not so sure. I think he may have been being a naughty bunny on that call. Hey, yeah. it was it was it was uh, an earnings call. You have to you can't mislead people on it. So you've, there's got to be a degree of honesty. But mm. hey, I don't know. I think that if the charges are going in, the trucks could be here soon. And that, man, I can't wait to see. Yeah, it'd be great. So, what do you think um, was uh, Mary Barra's uh, comments about um, GM overtaking Ford uh, true? As we speak about these, <laughs> or maybe we don't need to go down that rabbit hole, do we not? <laughs> well, you know, it, it does. It, I know it gets people very, you know, worked up where GM and Ford are talking a really good mm -hmm. game in terms of electric vehicles. But just run the numbers. So Tesla made about a million vehicles worldwide last yeah. year in 2021, and they're going to do a 50% growth rate. And so. They'll do one point. They've got capacity to make 1.4 million vehicles now. And they're going to open Berlin and they're going to open Austin. And GM are talking about having a capacity of 1 million vehicles in 2025. So um, I think it's great that the CEOs are bullish on electrification, that they, they they talk the talk. Hopefully they intend to, to walk the walk as well. To say that GM by the middle of the decade are going to be bigger than Tesla with the goal of 1 million EVs being made relies on Tesla deciding to make fewer vehicles than they did last year i mean they might but it's not going to happen so yeah. hey i mean uh, it's good to see friendly competition that particular claim of being bigger than tesla in the next couple of years i don't think that's going to happen yeah but you're right let's encourage it you know there's there's just from in my opinion anyway there's just a little bit too much toxicity out there yeah. um, and in the world of evs you know let's all let's all bring them up together you know the more evs we get in the road the more gas powered cars off it is totally. a good thing so if they want to say that and that eggs them on and they produce a few more cars then you go for it well done well done guys absolutely you, we've got time for one more story do you think yeah let's throw, throw yeah. it in you have let's something in mind Byron. Well, I'd love to talk about the ID5 if it's possible, because uh, this looks like it's going to be another exciting car. We talked about the Skoda Eniac already, mm. the uh, coupe version. ID5 and ID5, ID5 GTX have gone into production yeah. online right now to order, at least. I checked out the uh, VW.co.uk website, and you can now configure 
the ID5. Similar car to the ID4. Again, like the ENIAC Coupe, got a bit cut off. But I love the styling of this. What do you think, Blake? Would you go styling over practicality? Or what's your opinion? Uh, me personally at the moment practicality all of the way i've got two young kids one of them is one and a half and um, they love a snack in the car and they love just cramming that in places we've got buggies <laughs> nappy bags so for me it's practicality um and that's so uh, you know in previous uh we did a review there on the the uh the mg uh, zsev it's just like the, the crap just it's so much cheaper than the competition but i still get my range um you know the leather seats i can wipe stuff off so for me practicality but it's about what's going to hit the market you know what people like and i think they're really going to like the id id5 uh the gtx variant for a little bit of four-wheel traction um yeah i think i think it could do well possibly a little bit of saturation in the market now with so many similar crossover suvs but look, mm. that's what people want i think isn't it I think that's what people want to buy. So that's what they're, that's what everyone's, mm. everyone's making. As long as we get some cars at different price points, that's all that matters. Yeah. And like you say, uh, the video review that, uh, that you've done uh, of the MG ZS EV, I know you've been driving that uh, and uh, I rate it as well. I'm driving the original version. Can't mm. wait to have a play in the next Gen 1. So I think a, a great day of EV morning news to discuss uh, today. I love that Tesla supercharging story. Hey, Open it up everywhere. Now, come on, Tesla, get it done. And I'll wear your, I'll wear some more of your branded clothing. Uh, Blake, what was your one of your highlights of today's news? Uh, the highlight, I, I'm really excited by the Mini because I just love conversions. Like, I, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of smaller cars. I ran a Toyota uh, IQ for a few years. And anybody who doesn't know that, I think it was the smallest uh, four-seater car in the world at the time. Or absolutely miniature. You had back seats or you had a boot. It was one or the other. So I love those small cars. But uh, the Redwood... Uh, materials one is probably the most exciting the fact that they might hit profitability um, and we can get millions and hundreds of millions of ev batteries into recycling i think that's that's probably the best thing you know that, that i've seen there today on, on the, the stories we covered yeah a great day of news and now we'd love to hear from you watching if you've made it all the way to the end firstly well done. Uh, now you can keep the conversation going with us. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about any of the news that we've given you today. And we've just set up a new group on Facebook. Look for Best EV. And you can join us on there. Where we'll be hanging out and having a conversation about what's happening in the world of electric vehicles. Search Best EV. Pop over and join us in the discussion today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the show, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more shows like this. And we'll see you on the next one.